Uh, so yes, we are going to start very shortly on the on the second session on finance. Um, I'm I'm Joshua Berger from CDC Biodiversity, um, one of the co-hosts of this event with UNEP WCMC and uh, the Biodiversity Consultancy, and very happy to have everyone joining for for the second session where we will. Um, look more in, in details into some of the, the tools and, and initiatives uh, measuring biodiversity. So we are going to use uh, Mentimeter to take the questions and uh, ask you two, two short questions. Uh, so please join um, menti.com and uh, type the code uh, 209537 so you've got the uh, the code on the on the powerpoint too and on the um, on the slide um, so before before i hand the, the floor to uh, Antoine Vallier. So um, we are going to, um, so the, the, the webinar is recorded, so we are going to share the, the video afterwards. And the slides will also be shared, except if the, the speakers uh, disagree for some of the slides. And as I said, so we are going to take questions through Mentimeter. So you've got the, the code uh, at the bottom left of the slide, uh, 209535 uh, seven, and so you have to go to menti.com. Um, and uh, we are going to have three presentations and take the, the, the questions at the end of the session. So you just had the session um, chaired by, by Katie on biodiversity measurement and commitments within the finance sector. And now we are in the session on implementing a commitment to measure the impacts of financial assets. So how to move from uh, committing to really implementing the commitment and uh, how to measure. So we'll have uh, first a presentation from um, Marianne Vincent, um, Head of Business Development from Carbon for Finance, with an introduction from Antoine Vallier, um, the Global Biodiversity Ex Score Expert from CDC Biodiversity. Then we will have a presentation from Elisabeth Cassagne from um, Caisse de Depot, um, asset, the, the asset management arm of Caisse de Depot, and then um, from Rul Nosman from uh, ASN Bank, the Senior Advisor for Biodiversity of ASN Bank. Um, so first, we are going to see what you answered on uh, Mentimeter um, to the first question about what economic sector do you belong. So we've got 18 people who joined the Menti so far, um, with mostly financial institutions, as expected, since it's a, a session for financial institutions and um, consultancies, I guess. So we've got six consultancies and five financial institutions. So again, please join uh, at menti.com and then 2095357. You've got a button at the, at the bottom to ask questions. We will check the questions and um, ask them to the, to the speakers. Without further ado, I'm going to uh, give the floor to Antoine. So can you please uh, share your screen and, uh, and introduce the, the presentation from Carbon4 Finance? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, yes, quick introduction from on, on my side, Antoine Vallier. Uh, I'm an expert on the Global Biodiversity Score, the footprint, the biodiversity footprint methodology we've been developing uh, since the past uh, six years at CDC Biodiversity. The idea is uh, not to uh, get into a detailed presentation of the methodology, but really to give you a few concepts which are important to uh, understand and have in mind uh, to better understand the, the following presentations. So the global biodiversity score is a, is a puzzle of, uh, of, of various uh, sub-models. Uh, one uh, very important uh, concept is that we uh, mostly focus on trying to assess pressures on biodiversity rather than really like uh, collect biodiversity data itself. Uh, we cover uh, terrestrial uh, and aquatic, uh, aquatic meaning freshwater uh, biodiversity. This uh, is important to, uh, to, to, to have it in mind to understand what kind of data uh, we are trying to collect. 
uh, as the focus is on pressures, uh, we mostly gonna try to, uh, to gather data uh, that uh, allow us to uh, quantify pressures on biodiversity. On this, uh, on this slide, I, I will uh, show you the, the hierarchy of data, the, the data that actually can be used. The, the GBS is a flexible model which can use various uh, data types. Uh, on top of the pyramid, you have the, the best data, uh, which the, the most robust and the, the one which um, leads to the, the best results, but also the data which is uh, the, 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 the rarest. And, and the lower you go, the, the, the more available is the data, but also the, the, the more layer of uh, modelization you have to add to, uh, to get to the results, so the more uncertainties you get. So those are the, 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 the main categories of data we can use. Uh, as uh, I mentioned, we can use ecological surveys, but uh, it's uh, not often the case as this data is very uh, rare, especially as we focus on a full perimeter of impacts, including the, few, the full value chain. Uh, then we can um, gather data on pressures directly, uh, data on uh, inventories of, um, of raw materials and uh, inventories of physical flows. And, and lastly, uh, GBS can use financial data. And every time uh, we, the, the methodology will use the best available data to, to do the assessment. Another important concept is uh, we differentiate static impacts from dynamic impacts. Static impacts are the, the stock of impact, the, the biodiversity states at the beginning of the assessment, whereas dynamic impacts is uh, biodiversity changes. So the, the, the new impacts uh, being, being positive or negative that occurs during the assessment. Uh, the metric we use finally is the MSR uh, percent. Uh, I mean, it's based on the MSR percent, which comes from the, the Globio model. Uh, the, um, the Globio model is, uh, is uh, the one we use to translate the pressures uh, to uh, potential impacts. So it uh, characterizes ecosystem integrity um, and uh, values them, uh, value it uh, in percentage. So a pristine ecosystem is 100% MSA, and the, the more pressure you apply to it, the, the lower the ratio gets. Uh, we simply uh, use MSA uh, square meters by multiplying by the associated surface, and that's usually the, the metric uh, we, we use in a biodiversity assessment. That being said, we're here in... Um, in a financial uh, work stream. And uh, we know that uh, it's difficult for finance institutions to uh, manipulate uh, various indicators. Uh, if we stick to the MSA square meter, we have to uh, differentiate four, four buckets, uh, which are the dynamic static buckets uh, combined with the aquatic and terrestrial buckets. And this might not be very handy for all the, the, the practical cases where this uh, type of tool is used, especially uh, for financial institutions. So here I will uh, briefly show you uh, a method that we developed to uh, aggregate those different dimensions. Um, so to aggregate uh, aquatic and terrestrial, we, uh, we use the concept of uh, MSA parties per billion. The idea is that uh, terrestrial ecosystems and aquatic ecosystems are globally from, uh, of different sizes. Uh, you can see here at the bottom left, uh, the global terrestrial ecosystems uh, are, um, represent a surface of 130 million square meters, where are the aquatic ecosystem, and here again, uh, I precise that it's only fresh water, uh, only 11 uh, square kilometers. So, they are the ratio of uh, almost one to ten. So, and to compare, it's if you simply add aquatic to terrestrial impacts, you will have a, you will tend to uh, overestimate uh, terrestrial impacts over aquatic aquatic ones, which are structurally lower. So, switching to MSI PPB, so in fraction to a gl uh, fraction to the go to global um, to the global uh, quantity, which is uh, which is available. You, uh, you, you uh, then uh, have the same, uh, same ratio and it's uh, cleaner to compare aquatic impacts and terrestrial impacts. To compare static and dynamic, we introduce a different concept. Uh, we uh, use uh, time recovery uh, assumption. Um, 
comparing a stock and a flow is always uh, is always difficult. Um, Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Shabil. Hi, uh, um, I, we just wanted to make sure everything was all right. Yep. Um, and if you can share your screen and if everything was working fine. Yeah, sure. Uh, I can't hear Antoine at the moment, but that's probably... Yeah, because we're in a separate room. Correct, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, share screen, wait, uh, where am I? So you understood that uh, yeah, when it's your turn, you will yeah have to share your screen and yeah. All right, so I can try it now or not? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. You should be able to do. Sure. Oh, yeah, you have the right. Yeah, good, perfect. Yeah, fine. Do I need yes. to put it on this one? Wait. Full screen. And, uh... Yeah, it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it's perfect. Thank you. And okay. I hear you fine. I think you can turn on your camera when when you're gonna have to talk. And yeah, yeah. that should be okay. Thank right. you. Can I um, can I now leave this room and listen to yes. the presentation and join yes. again? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Well, Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Yes, you too. Very quickly, because I, I'm sure you guys are aware of this concept. We use, uh, so the, the GBS uh, assess the full parameter uh, of an activity. So meaning uh, all the different scopes of the value chain. Uh, we focus on scope uh, one, two, and three upstream. At the moment, the scope three downstream is not systematically covered by the, by the, by the methodology. That's it for the technical part uh, on the GBS, and I will leave it to Marianne uh, Carbon4 presenting the BIA. Thanks, Antoine. So I don't see any questions yet uh, from the audience. Remember to ask your questions on uh, on Menti and uh, Marianne. You're free to to share your screen and, and start the presentation. So the the introduction by Antoine was an introduction for both the presentation of uh, Marianne and uh, Elisabeth uh, Cassagne uh, after after that. Hello, everyone. Okay. Can you hear me correctly? Yes. yes. Great. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me to participate to this roundtable. Um, so I'm here to explain what we want to do in terms of uh, developing a biodiversity database by Carbon for Finance, uh, based on the GBS methodology, um, and how uh, our wish is to assess uh, the biodiversity impact of uh, an investment portfolio. Uh, so first of all, I will just say a few words about Carbon for Finance and uh, who we are. So Carbon for Finance is part of the group Carbon Four uh, that was created in 2007 by the climate experts uh, Jean-Marc Jancovici and Alain Grandjean. Uh, the group Carbon Four is organized in two independent branches: uh, the consulting entity Carbon Four and the climate data provider Carbon for Finance. Um, so Carbon Four has more than 10 years of expertise in performing life cycle carbon assessments in all economic sectors and is the French leading consulting firm specialized in low carbon strategy and adaptation to climate change. So based on this uh, sectoral expertise, the group uh, decided to create uh, Carbon for Finance in 2016 with the objective to provide investors with reliable climate data solutions uh, to, able, to be able to assess climate risk and opportunities in their books. So the key difference between the other EIG data providers is that Carbon for Finance is first a climate and environmental experts uh, that came to the data to, to bring some expertise and not the other way around. Uh, so we will have the same uh, scientific approach that the consulting entity when they, uh, they do uh, a carbon uh, footprint of a company. Uh, so our clients are asset managers, uh, asset owners uh, in Europe uh, and beyond, uh, banks, index providers, uh, wishing to report their climate performance and develop climate investment tools uh, based on custom data solutions. We are a team of 20 analysts. Um, we recalculate all the data we collect and um, we've got a global coverage of around 20,000 securities. Uh, listed securities, corporate and sovereign, but we can also extend the methodology to uh, unlisted assets. <clears throat> so earlier this year, um, Carbon4 Finance and CDC Biodiversity 
uh, decided to enter a strategic partnership to develop a biodiversity database. This partnership is based on the complementarity of our expertise. So Carbon for Finance in a, is an experienced data provider mixing quantitative and qualitative evaluation of the climate impacts uh, of our portfolio for all asset classes. Uh, and we want to leverage on our existing bottom-up analysis uh, on climate to collect additional uh, relevant data for the global biodiversity score developed by CDC Biodiversity. Because we are convinced that it is very valuable uh, to combine climate and biodiversity, uh, those topics are very closely linked uh, and it has been pointed out by uh, all international initiatives that it's important uh, to uh, reunite the climate and the biodiversity communities to join efforts on common problems and solutions. So practically speaking, uh, the analysis conducting on climate and biodiversity have a lot of similarities. Uh, so doing them together over the doing uh, twice the job of collecting the, the raw data, and we can offer a consistent data set of results for both climate and biodiversity, as we already collect uh, a lot of uh, underlying data on, uh, on operational data uh, for the climate analysis of the company. So the objective of our uh, biodiversity database uh, will be to measure, monitor, and explicit companies' impact and dependency on nature in a consistent and reliable way, and to integrate biodiversity in the into the financial sector's uh, investment choices and risk assessment uh, to quantify and communicate uh, the systemic risk relative to the degradation of nature. So I try to summarize um, what we ex want to do. Uh, so uh, biodiversity impact analytics uh, will benefit from uh, complementary expertise and methodologies. So for Carbon for Finance, we uh, develop a methodology uh, for transition risk uh, called carbon impact analytics. So it measures the financial risk resulting from the process of the adjustment towards the low carbon economy. So all the policy changes, regulation, uh, new technology. Uh, they can uh, they can have on uh, on a corporate and um, so we collect operational data from annual and uh, operational report of the company so all public documents uh, and uh, we will uh, do an analysis on the full value chain uh, of a corporate uh, and a sovereign so we will calculate the scope one two and three of carbon emission induced and uh, emission savings but we won't just collect uh, the data reported by the company. We will recalculate that as if we were doing a, a carbon footprint of a company. So we will collect uh, operational and activity data. For example, I'm a, for an oil and gas company, I will collect the tons of barrels uh, produced by the company and I will convert them into uh, a carbon emission. Uh, we will collect for a car manufacturer the number of cars sold so that we can recalculate the scope free. So uh, we will collect all this underlying uh, raw data uh, at the company level. So uh, we will build uh, this database for transition risk. And uh, we've got another methodology for physical risk called CRISC, Climate Risk Impact Screening. So physical risk measure the vulnerability of a portfolio towards uh, climate hazards like floods, uh, sea level rise, etc., etc. And we will have uh, the analysis of, uh, of um, the activity of the company with a geographical and sectoral breakdown. And for this couple of uh, geographic and activity for each company, we will uh, stress that uh, for each uh, climate event. So that will uh, give us another additional uh, data points in our database for all this uh, underlying data uh, of uh, geographical and sectoral breakdown. Uh, on top of that, uh, GBS biodiversity uh, data comes from the global, global bio model as explained by Antoine. Uh, so it's a renowned and peer review model uh, developed by um, PBL Netherlands. Um, so it, I won't go back on this because Antoine explained it very well, but uh, we will have additional data uh, to be able to, uh, to use the global biodiversity score uh, that will calculate the biodiversity footprint of a company. So the results will be expressed in uh, MSA by a square meter to measure the intactness of ecosystems. 
So we try to summarize uh, what we want to do. So uh, uh, Antoine explained that uh, he needed a lot of uh, underlying data to, uh, to calculate the GBS score. Um, so for us, we have already have a lot of underlying data. Uh, so we will leverage on this existing data with a historical uh, database since uh, 2015 with a lot of bottom-up analysis, a lot of uh, uh, data points that we collected for the last four years. Uh, using our existing database, climate risk and past screening and carbon impact analytics. So we got all the financial data already. We've got all the activity data uh, breakdown by uh, the sectors and geographic data. Uh, we've got all the um, fossil, fuel, fossil fuel reserves data, energy mix, uh, all this operational information to calculate the carbon footprint of the full value chains, COP1, 2, and 3, upstream and downstream. So we will use all these thousands of thousands of data points, and we will complete that with uh, additional uh, relevant biodiversity data to be able to uh, calculate the biodiversity uh, footprint of, uh, of an issuer and uh, at portfolio level. So very quickly, uh, so the measure of the metric of uh, the biodiversity impact analysis database will be the MSA, it means species abundance. And uh, what's important here is uh, the VI database will cover all these uh, pressures, uh, which is very important because uh, the difficulty is to have uh, this type of details in the database. Um, so that's the key strengths of our project is to be transparent. Uh, we want to have a very, a very high transparency of the methodology so that it can be challenged uh, by uh, the peers and scientific um, groups. Uh, we want to have a global database, uh, so a very large coverage of listed assets, equities and bonds, and green bonds, of red bonds. And uh, at some point, we want to extend that to, um, to private equity, real estate, infrastructure assets as well, um, when, we, when we will have uh, the stability on the listed assets. Uh, we will uh, have this bottom-up approach that we already have on the climate data. Uh, to have a very uh, fine collection of data in terms of uh, geographic and activities for the company. Uh, the sectoral expertise uh, that we do with Carbon4 uh, for many years and uh, the continuous development of the methodology because uh, as we can see for, for the climate, um, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot of uh, evolution in the regulation and uh, the sectors and uh, the new technology so we need to keep that updated and we want to be very flexible uh, in, in the, the usage of the database um, CDC Biodiversity has been developing the GBS for the past five years um, and uh, as for the climate within Carbon4 uh, the very big challenge is uh, I was been to find the best compromise between scientific robustness and operationality for the future users uh, that's why we understand each other very so well with CDCB, uh, because we share the conviction that the methodology needs to be uh, uh, scientifically challenged, uh, but together with a practical application for investors uh, to be able to assess the biodiversity impact of their portfolio on a large scale. So here uh, is an example of uh, what the platform will look like. Um, so uh, you will have a detailed quantitative GPS footprint results in MSA uh, per square meter, the score. Uh, you will have a score uh, at issuer level and then on the next slide at portfolio level. You will have access to all the intermediary data that we collect and that we use for the calculation so that you can understand the results. Uh, we will have a capacity to provide various sectoral benchmarks and to compare um, the score with international targets. You can see on the upper right uh, corner that uh, we can give a rating with the CDB alignments. Uh, and then you will have all the GPS footprints, uh, aquatic dynamic, aquatic static, terrestrial dynamic, terrestrial static, as uh, Antoine explained just before, and all the pressure points um, on the lower left side. So here at portfolio level, uh, we just uh, showed a, a portfolio of three companies, but we can aggregate the result at portfolio level and they will give you the sectoral distribution and impact distribution of a portfolio. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, the roadmap is uh, we expect to deliver the database on listed assets uh, for 5,000 
issuer um, in the second semester of 2021. Uh, so we will uh, keep collaborating with the GPS to, uh, to develop this database. Thank you, Marianne. Um, so I'm going to let uh, Elisabeth Cassagne uh, take the next presentation. We, so Elisabeth, you can start sharing your screen. We still do not have uh, questions on, on Mentimeter, so I, I guess uh, all the speakers were very clear. But uh, please feel free to ask questions on, on Mentimeter uh, that we will take at the end of the session during the, the Q&A. Uh, so we have two additional presentations, uh, first one by Elizabeth Kassani and then by Rul Nosman. Elizabeth, the floor is yours. Hello. Can yes, we me? can hear you. Yep. Oh, OK. OK, thank you. Um, thank you for introduction, uh, Joshua, and um, for your presentation, um, Antoine and, um, and Marianne. Um, the, the question is, um, it's uh, after all those presentations, how to integrate those intelligence um, in a portfolio and how to manage a financial portfolio in that context. Um, so uh, as it was said, um, CDC uh, Caisse de Depot uh, has marked this uh, engagement uh, signing the finance for biodiversity pledge last September um, 25 and um, we are very um, uh, proud of it, and you've seen our uh, CEO speaking in the video um, and uh, reiterates the contribution, protection, and restoration for biodiversity of financial activities and investment, and that's uh, our uh, subject. Um, so uh, we wanted to, um, maybe we can uh, slip the, the slide. Um, I do it. Okay. Um, we wanted to uh, to uh, explore with um, with CDC biodiversity. Um, Elizabeth, maybe I should uh, I should share the slides for you, and uh, yeah, you can yeah. also add um, yeah. I, I uh, don't... your video. Oh. So I'm going to, and we have one question on on Menti, and I'm going to uh, to share the slides. Uh, okay. Are you okay? There we go. So you turn the page, I do. I do, so just please tell me next and then I move to the next slide. Okay, so we wanted to um, to explore uh, what, what should be a, a, a study of a European large cap um, equity universe, um, because uh, we, we used to have some results of uh, a limited um, quantity of um, of equity and wanted to have a, a more large uh, vision of what should be the results of biodiversity, biodiversity score uh, on a large universe uh, as the uh, European large cap equity universe. So the analysis was conducted by CDC Biodiversity with the uh, global biodiversity score tool presented uh, just before. Um, we we uh, are based on uh, data inputs with uh, financial data only, performed by uh, fact set data, and using uh, the exobase nomenclature for the region and industry group, as you understood that um, the region, uh, uh, country, and industry is very important in this uh, type of analysis. So uh, we had two questions to explore. Um, what are the impacts on biodiversity of a large cap equity universe? And not only some stock picking um, and the large basis and uh, what because of which industries and which pressure are, are responsible of uh, the impacts. And after that, uh, how does the investment inform strategy to reduce impact on biodiversity. In fact, our, um, our process is like uh, the uh, uh, CO2 uh, process we had um, 10 years ago, five years ago for a portfolio. Next slide. Hello, ah, yes. So the first um, analysis reveals the most impacting industries within the universe. So you can see on the chart on the left, 
the breakdown of uh, the uh, impact of uh, the uh, biodiversity in the uh, universe portfolio uh, as explained. So we, you, you have some big, big contributors and we, we detail on, the, on these contributors and seeing that manufacture of food products uh, as a, uh, not expected uh, companies represent only 4% of the turnover, but 52% of the static stock of uh, impact uh, of the footprint, as we say. Um, and after um, we, we seen that they represent also 20% of the additional impact, let's say dynamic impact as present by um, uh, Mr. Valier. Um, so the food products uh, manufacture uh, um, um, industry group is very impacting. Uh, we had um, explored that manufacture of cooks and refined petroleum products only uh, 11 percent, not only uh, 11 percent of the turnover, and electricity, gas, steam, and air conditioning supply, five percent on the turnover, cause significant flows of impact due to the GHG emission, and they're responsible for 19 and 17 percent respectively. So this is very instructive of what the contribution are coming from. Next slide. Um, we, we decide to, um, to go further in the analysis and uh, have the um, analysis of where is coming the pressure, uh, where is coming the, where, from where are coming the impacts. Um, and uh, if they are broken down by scopes and by pressures. And uh, it seems that um, the, the universe um, that uh, analyze around 200 um, uh, equities around uh, is most impacted by um, the scope three. Um, the scope three, it means uh, the, the downstream, um, upstream and downstream uh, analysis. Uh, so you can see on the chart on the right, um, the universe uh, is uh, almost 5,700 uh, uh, from the uh, static part and 50 uh, from the dynamic part. And the, 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 the weight of the scope three is very important in those analysis, those breakdown. Uh, on the chart below, you can see the, the breakdown of the footprint by pressure. And uh, you can see that 75% of the dynamic impact is due to climate change pressure, which is not a surprise itself but driving, driven, driven by electricity, gas, and petroleum companies, which is not a surprise also. But it's uh, the first time we had the representation of this footprint um, breakdown uh, measured by uh, MSC PPB, explained by uh, Mr. Vallier. And the main driver of the static impact uh, is uh, coming from food processing and manufacturing companies. So this is the two main results we had on the analysis of the big universe of 200 uh, equity. After that, uh, we, we have to, um, um, to integrate that results uh, into our um, financial and uh, extra financial analysis pr uh, process. And uh, from the chart, uh, you can see, uh, you, you may recognize that the very um, traditional process explained uh, by um, the, 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 the people just before um, us at the first half. And uh, we, we have a lot of um, uh, pillar uh, to, to make, uh, to construct portfolio in order to have a um, um, biodiversity positive impact. Uh, portfolio in the near future. So we have the screening and the exclusion process well known from the finance uh, and extra finance 
community, the voting um, in, at the um, uh, assembly and uh, addressing the company, which is a very well known process, the engagement, uh, as explained in the first part of the, the conference, uh, the ESG integration, you, you all know also. But the most important to, um, is to address the impact investing and how to address impact of biodiversity was not so um, easy. Uh, and now we have um, a first tool to uh, measure from where we, we're coming, uh, we're starting, and how to, to measure the, the further impact in the near future. Um, so this chart uh, try to um, uh, give an example of the using of the results uh, as explained. Um, the measure has been uh, performed on the universe, 200, uh, almost 200 uh, um, companies. Um, and uh, the, the, the performance is to explain how to use it in a portfolio, in a financial portfolio. So um, on uh, the graph, you can see uh, two red lines. Um, the, the, the low red line is the average intensity of the vertically integrated benchmark which is the impact, um, a very low impact uh, in terms of intensity. Then you have uh, a second line, the high impact intensity threshold, uh, which means that um, uh, depending on uh, based geographical breakdown for the industry, uh, some of the um, uh, corporate can, can be in that uh, zone. And uh, on the top of the graph, uh, you, you have the uh, exclusion of the high impact industry and company that are most uh, uh, um, too high uh, to, to be selected in the portfolio. So you, you have a, so, a small points, um, the blue points um, that are uh, the value uh, coming from the simulation portfolio, the red points that are coming from the benchmark not in the simulation portfolio, and the green points, uh, as you may see, uh, maybe in in the um, in the little corner, uh, 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 the value in the the universe in the simulation portfolio, and you can see that uh, uh, some value uh, have low intensity um, and um, are contributing very uh, positively. Uh, in, in the portfolio and not impacting the portfolio. Um, um, the portfolio, yes. And this chart is quite mm, um, difficult to, to explain, but uh, we, we have um, on the uh, further slide, um, Joshua, the results more, maybe more friendly uh, explained. And you can see um, on the uh, portfolio, um, the reasons explained as a simulation portfolio uh, with a, a static uh, aquatic and terrestrial uh, static results measurement uh, and the dynamic um, results uh, explained in that um, uh, hearse represented. So you have the, uh, the center of the hearse, which is a green part, which is acceptable uh, portfolio um, measurement. Um, if uh, the portfolio has been con const um, constructed by um, uh, optimizing the uh, biodiversity uh, measurement, uh, then you have the uh, benchmark, which is uh, maybe five, uh, um, uh, um, 500, um, 5,700 uh, with um, results from the static uh, uh, measurement and 50 uh, points for the uh, dynamic measurement. And you can see that the simulation portfolio that could have been constructed with the best um, contributors uh, should have a good performance versus benchmarked in static and a dynamic uh, way. Um, so uh, expressed in uh, MSR PPB explained by uh, Mr. Vallier. So um, we perform uh, another portfolio 
Uh, ah, yes, um, the, 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 the performance of portfolio has been traduced by a score. Um, the, so the score at the benchmark aggregated score is 82, um, explained um, in terms of uh, static and the, uh, the dynamic and static part of the simulation portfolio should be 60, uh, 76 points. Uh, which is detailed in the uh, aggregated score uh, in static and dynamic score uh, divided by 50, as explained um, by Mr. Vallier, and divided, divided by two uh, to have um, the, the mean score of the static and dynamic aquatic and terrestrial score of that uh, hypothetic uh, portfolio. Um, and uh, what is the important part is that, that um, as we understood the, 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 the capability of the traduction of the MAC score into a, a score integrating in a portfolio, in a financial portfolio, we decided to apply uh, this uh, score to our uh, portfolio, uh, test portfolio at um, uh, Caisse de Depot uh, in um, uh, team dedicated to that um, experience, um, which is innovation a process and a, a specific testing portfolio uh, from our uh, teams uh, at GDAP, which is uh, uh, or the name of the uh, asset management part of uh, Caisse de Depot. And, um, we are, tr we are trying on that portfolio to perform simulation uh, as CO2, as um, sustainable goals, but also we decided to perform the uh, uh, global biodiversity score with the uh, scoring of MSA uh, per uh, square meters uh, traduced into a score, into all simulation portfolio. And uh, we, we perform uh, this calcul um, with the uh, uh, CDC biodiversity uh, team and obtain um, a quite um, um, result, which is in that, um, in that slide, which is uh, 7,500 uh, score for um, uh, uh, the um, static part and 59 um, for the dynamic part. And the score are uh, respectively uh, all um, uh, 82 points for the benchmark and uh, 107 for the portfolio. So you may say that it's not a good result for the portfolio. But in fact, in fact, um, this is the starting point uh, of the uh, measurement of a real um, testing portfolio that uh, is constructed by uh, optimization, which is uh, a real portfolio that could be uh, existing, uh, diversifying the sectors, um, the, or not only uh, the good sectors that impact for, uh, positively for biodiversity, but also integrate all the uh, economy sector uh, representation that should be a real portfolio. And it is, this is important for us the, for that reason because um, it, it is a starting point to uh, make uh, progress uh, to begin the journey uh, versus uh, optimization, maximization of a portfolio, which is um, combining the financial uh, uh, optimization, the, um, uh, the biodiversity score, the CO2 uh, performance, and uh, which is the real life uh, for um, uh, the, the asset management of, um, of uh, CDC. Uh, and if we are con uh, convinced of the, uh, the, 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 the possibility of maximizing, uh, that could be uh, very uh, important for development in the near future. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, so we are going to move to the last presentation from uh, Rul and Osman. So Rul, if you can maybe start uh, sharing your screen. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. And uh, so we've got one question on uh, Mentimeter um, for Carbon for Finance, which we'll take at the end 
and uh, we've all, we have also one comment from uh, Yuan Lamarant on on the chat. Um, I'm surprised that we don't have more questions, but uh, yeah, feel free to ask them. We could also maybe answer some of them after the the, the webinar. So thanks, Rule. The floor is yours. It seems we lost you, Rule. We were seeing you, but. Um, ah, yeah. Yeah, we lost him. Sibyl, can you check if he's on the on the other room? I think maybe switch to the other room or something. Um, so maybe then we can. Um, so uh, Marianne, you should be able to see the question um, on my screen, which I am sharing. So the question is when the BIA database will be available. Um, so if you want, yeah, you answered on the ch on the chat. If you want to give more details, please uh, take open your microphone. Um, so the BIA will be ready in June or September 2021 and focused on listed asset equities and bonds. And maybe um, Antoine, you can give a few more details about how the calculations were conducted for the for the um, case study presented by Elizabeth while I'm trying to find where rule is. <laughs> yes, sure. Yes, sure. Can you hear me? Uh, well, it's back. I couldn't hear anything, but... Uh, yes, you're back now. Yeah. Oh, okay, so let's move to the presentation as we are running short on time. Yeah, so we can see you, but we do not have your presentation. Do you want me to share the, the screen or can you share yours? Yeah, if you want to do it, to be sure. Okay, I'm going to do that. Tack. Okay. Yes, all right. Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth, for this uh, really interesting presentation. Uh, I'm Roel Nozeman. Uh, I work for ASM Bank uh, uh, and uh, are responsible for the biodiversity uh, part of the work at ASM Bank. Now, we are a, a, a Dutch retail bank, uh, really focused on sustainability. Um, and uh, yeah, within the, our policies and vision, we uh, have identified biodiversity as one of the most important uh, pillars and focus points. Um, next slide, please. So we've been working on this, this topic since 2014. Uh, at that time, no, there wasn't uh, really uh, a proper methodology developed yet. Uh, so we, yeah, we started uh, developing a methodology ourselves together with Pre and Krem, two consultancies. Um, and luckily now there's a, a lot more going on in the field of biodiversity in the financial sector. Uh, but yeah, as the title says, it's a, it's turning into a growing maze of initiative. There's so many initiatives uh, out there. Uh, if you compare to climate uh, years ago, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's a lot more, but that's logical, I think, because uh, the topic is uh, a lot more complex. Um, but here are some examples, the EU taxonomy, yeah, first looking at climate and now uh, focusing also on biodiversity. The TNFD starting up, uh, the Finance for Biodiversity Pledge, which has, uh, I think, 11 new members today. So congratulations for that. Really great movement. Uh, Encore, which, of course, we heard already about. Um, I was reading recently about the, you know, the standard reporting organizations, such as CDP, CD, CDSB, GRI, uh, SASB. Um, and they starting to integrate sustainability and also cooperate with each other on that topic, uh, on that on the topic of sustainability. And yeah, presumably they will also include something on biodiversity in the future. Uh, and then we have now a number of different methodologies uh, being developed by uh, by ASM Bank, also by CDC, by uh, Iceberg Data Lab, Encore, ICN. So there's a yeah, there's a really growing field of initiatives, and uh, it's uh, it's it's quite complex, I think, for financial institutions that starting in this field to know where to start. Eh? And, uh, it's sort of similar when we started; it was difficult to ask yourself well, where to start, what what well, uh, should I set a goal, uh, how should I start me measuring with methodology should I use. Um, now, 
uh, amongst others, because of this, we have started Paybuff, uh, started in November 2019. And, uh, and this summer, we presented our first report. And Paybuff, the, the Partnership for Biodiversity Accounting Financials, is a sister initiative of Paycoff, which is uh, the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials. Uh, that was also initiated by ASM Bank a couple of years ago. And that turned into uh, now a global initiative, a global standard for climate uh, disclosure um, uh, and being adopted by uh, over 85 um, large uh, financial institutions and with Paybuff we want to uh, want to uh, uh, reach the, reach a similar goal and really yeah help to mainstream and harmonize uh, all these principles and work going on on the, on the field of data on the field of impact assessment and disclosure because um, we feel that that that's really necessary because uh, like what I said on the previous slide, there's quite a maze, and it's it's what we when we talk to financial institutions, it's it's quite it's getting quite difficult to uh, to to see what's happening and what uh, uh, what to do, uh, especially in that as for for financial institutions, biodiversity is a new topic. There's not so much knowledge there uh, available. Um, so this this payoff initiative could really help uh, in knowledge sharing, um, in showing. Um, um, what developments, uh, uh, what the developments are with all these initiatives, uh, and uh, that's also part of the things that PayPal will offer. Uh, um, and next to the, the uh, an introduction to uh, to uh, impact assessments. Our previous slide, please. Uh, also, uh, yeah, regular updates on uh, on the old initiatives, and of course, what we don't want to do is to double double do double work. So we also we are in contact with all these different initiatives to to to, to yeah make sure that we do uh, our worthwhile uh, work, um, and we will work within PayBuff within spe specialized working groups. So uh, there are a lot of questions from the agriculture, and, um, uh, probably we'll start a working group for that, but also on certification standards. Microfinance is, uh, is, is a topic that's uh, of really of interest to uh, a lot of uh, institutions. And we, yeah, we started uh, firstly with six financial, Dutch financial institutions, and we're now talking to a, a large number of uh, uh, institutions uh, also outside the Netherlands uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah. Go to see this initiative further. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, I explained a little bit about this, about uh, our own methodology, uh, which is developed by ASN. Uh, what's important to note uh, on the previous slide, actually, uh, with PayBuff, PayBuff is not BFFI, it's not the ASN methodology. We really want to uh, in, uh, incorporate all the methodologies uh, in there and really, yeah, contribute in that way uh, to uh, to this development of harmonized principles. So we have been working on this methodology since 2014, uh, first only measuring impact uh, and this year starting also pilots to look at dependencies, integrate, integrating the, the Encore tool uh, and in future, future uh, we also want to look at uh, ecosystem services, which of course is also really worthwhile and gives a lot of insight to, uh, to uh, specific investments. Um, now by setting, uh, we've set a, a long-term goal for, for biodiversity. Uh, we want to reach an overall net positive impact with all our investments in 2030. And, and that's why we come to questions around positive impact. So what is a positive impact? Uh, how, do you, how do you measure this? Uh, what's the reference situation if you measure this? And all this, these choices, uh, yeah, they, they, need, they need to be transparent, but uh, it really helps if you don't make, uh, that, 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 doesn't, that everybody doesn't make their own choices on, on these important topics. Um, but we do that together as a, financial, as a financial sector, that we get more standard in that and uh, that we uh, um, yeah, get more transparency uh, uh, in the development of this. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, the, the biodiversity footprint of financial institutions, it's a four-step approach. It's, it's quite similar as the, 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 the approach uh, uh, being used by CDC. Um, four steps first understanding really the investment so knowing what you invest in uh, uh, for the our equity part we also we also use this uh, axio based database where you can find background data uh, you can find uh, the, the environmental uh, data of uh, of uh, certain sectors in certain countries um, I, I think approximately 90 percent of the global economy is modeled uh, in that database so there's really a lot of work for our information in there which you can use uh, up to the point uh, where companies will be transparent about those impacts. Uh, we use for, for uh, currently only the green uh, 
uh, the carbon impact, which we can find uh, directly from companies, but all the other impacts are mainly we have to use background data to uh, to make a proper calculation. Uh, so these are average uh, average data. Um, but if you know what you're doing, and if you know that these are average data, and there's some uh, uh, there's some lags in it still, uh, it, it gives you a good uh, good starting point to find the hotspots uh, or in your portfolio, and that's where we use it for. Um, so. You get some insight in where where you can find the pressures uh, at which sectors at which uh, asset classes, um, and it gives you also direction to steer uh, where you can steer into the right direction. Um, we measure our, our impact uh, not only for equity but for all asset classes, also for mortgages, for loans, for uh, renewable finance investments, um, uh, even government bonds. Uh, it's possible to uh, to measure the impact, and that's what what we've been doing uh, for a couple of years already. Um, and after you've done this, uh, this, this quite a rough assessment, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can make some adjustments for uh, things that uh, that you can't uh, can't calculate or measure at this moment yet, uh, and set up policies uh, to uh, to address these uh, these topics. Next slide, please. So this is Exile Base. Uh, yeah, developed with uh, EU subsidies in a, in a period of 10 years, really a great database because you can find really a lot of information uh, on there, uh, which really makes it possible for uh, all asset managers, to, asset managers to start steering their portfolio in the right direction uh, without knowing all the exact information yet. Uh, it really gives you insight in where to go and also uh, it gives you insight in the differences between asset classes, the, 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 the reasons why uh, certain asset classes and certain companies uh, give a high impact uh, and, uh, and gives you uh, yeah, the starting point for engagement, uh, policy changes, uh, exclusion, uh, no, a lot of choices uh, are possible uh, from having this, uh, this data and this information. Uh, next slide, please. So the, the first step is, uh, is translating uh, all this, this environmental data in something that yeah, you can uh, you can measure, and of course, financial institutions like to measure and have uh, one number or uh, not uh, a large amount of numbers, but uh, one number on which they can steer. Uh, we use the PDF, the potentially discrete fraction of species, uh, on the spatial area uh, on a yearly basis, and we actually we use the hectares uh, biodiversity loss uh, in a year. Um, but you can uh, you, you can uh, um, also uh, present it in the square meter amount. Uh, so we measure this biodiversity loss on land, uh, also for freshwater and also for marine water. Um, and it gives you uh, yeah, insight into uh, where these pressures amount and, uh, and a way you should, should start steering. Next slide, please. This is our uh, some of our footprints. On the left side, you can see the the, the the footprint of the bank, the banking part. Um, on the on the left side bar, you can see the value of our investments. Uh, on the on the right side, you can see above the line the negative impact, and the below the line the the positive impact uh, or avoided impact from uh, uh, from this uh, uh, this assessment. Uh, and you can see that, for example, climate uh, uh, wind energy, uh, climate bonds, solar energy, uh, and also agroforestry uh, systems, uh, in which at least the which the, the, the ones we calculated and measured, uh, gives you a uh, yeah, avoided or a positive impact, and, uh, and investments in uh, in uh, mortgages, uh, number of loans, healthcare. Uh, uh, water boards, uh, rail transport gives you uh, a negative impact. Um, on the right side, uh, the, the graph, you can see the biodiversity impact in hectares uh, for the whole portfolio, uh, specified by asset class. Um, and what you can see is that uh, that uh, no, it's quite a challenge for, for investments, for uh, as asset manager, that you can see that mo most of the impact is negative. Um, but there are, of course, uh, are ways to also uh, increase your positive impact. A uh, lot of, lot of um, projects and, uh, and asset classes that create an avoided or positive impact uh, uh, have to do with greenhouse gas uh, uh, mitigation with avoided impact. Um, so you can see this with uh, with wind energy, with solar energy as well, and also agroforestry. And of course, forestry, we're not 
heavily involved uh, in at the moment yet, but that's one of the, the, the investments that you can uh, you can invest more in uh, to uh, to increase your positive impact. And we're currently into uh, yeah the the search for projects to uh, to really uh, yeah increase our positive impacts and that, and avoided impacts to uh, to take steps uh, on uh, on the road to uh, our long term goal. Um, next slide, please. So some learned some learned lessons uh, from uh, from from doing this work. Now, first of all, the understanding of the the now the value of bi of biodiversity is for financial institutions really something quite new. Uh, so the, the the understanding is quite low. Uh, also for businesses, when we started, uh, we first asked stakeholders what they were thinking and what they were expecting from us. Um, and that gives you some insight also what uh, uh, of where to start. Um, start small with some uh, some small pilots uh, that uh, that gives you uh, understanding internally for what you're doing and what this all this measurement means, uh, and then grow uh, internal support uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 grow the grow further internally because. Uh, of course, the support and people understand why biodiversity is important, but what it will mean for your organization, that, that's uh, that's something you have to take the time for to uh, to get understanding for that, especially on a higher level. Um, measuring a port on portfolio level gives you really insight into the hotspots, hotspots and uh, and by doing that, you can focus more on these hotspots and use different tools to, uh, to, uh, to look at uh, different aspects and get more uh, detailed information and, uh, and also, uh, um, yeah, be able to to look at the trade-offs between the different topics. Uh, if you measure biodiversity, you look at all the different topics because uh, it's such a broad broad uh, um, uh, field. Uh, and if you only if you only measuring climate or some other topics, you uh, yeah you, you might run to, run into problems. So important to uh, to look for those for those trade-offs as well. And of course, lastly, measuring. If you don't measure, if you don't start measuring, you don't, you don't know really where you're going, and uh, you can't really manage manage it and steer in the right direction. So that's it for me. Um, thanks very much. Thanks, Rul. We've got one question for you on the chat um, from your footprint results slides. So I'm going to put it back. Um, should we understand that you've got more climate bonds with negative biodiversity footprint? Sorry, uh, than ones with positive biodiversity footprint in yellow. Um, uh, below the line is is, is, is positive or avoided uh, avoided uh, avoided the negative impact. So uh, climate bonds uh, will help us uh, in uh, in our goal and, and lowering the our net impact net by net impact on biodiversity. Okay. Yeah. So the you've got more yellow uh, with positive impacts, which is the represented here with uh, negative uh, figures. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 one sheet is uh, the left the table was about only the bank part, uh, which may be a bit confusing, and the right side of the table is uh, for our investment uh, part of the business, which is uh, not included in the bank part. So it's it, it, it's a two different graphs of two different uh, organizations or entities. Okay. Thanks, Rul. Uh, so we've run out of time. We've tried to answer the, the different questions that were asked uh, on, on the Menti. So I put the answer to this question, uh, integration of BRIM and STAR into MSA GBS uh, on the Zoom chat. And uh, Antoine Vallier put the answer to this question about the impact of the food industry um, and the downstream impacts um, on the chat also. Um, so I don't see any other questions on, on Mentimeter or on the Zoom chat. So thanks, thanks everyone for uh, your time. Thanks to all our speakers for the presentation. We are going to put the, the presentations uh, on the, the website uh, of the event and, and send them except if speakers uh, disagree. And we will also uh, later on put the, the video of the, the two sessions, the two finance sessions um, on online. And the session, the parallel session from the business, uh, it should also be the same. So we should also have the the, the, the slides and the videos uh, all linked on the same web page. Um, yeah. So thanks everyone, and um, enjoy the European Business and Nature Summit this afternoon and uh, tomorrow. Thanks.